morning and happy Sunday. Thank you for tuning in. For those that are visiting for the first time, thank you so much for tuning in. We are glad and we are honored that you have chosen us to worship with this morning. So there are a couple of announcements before we get started um, that we want everyone to be aware of. The first is that the tab is now on Fire TV. So that means all you have to do if you have a Fire TV is to go and search for Tab TV. Search for Tab TV on your Fire TV and there you're going to find Bible studies, you're going to find worship services, and a couple of other things too. So if you have Fire TV, you can type in Tab TV and you will find us there. The next thing is that if you know a graduating senior from St. Louis Public Schools, from Riverview Garden School District, or from Ferguson Florissant School District, tag them now or share this with them because there is a scholarship opportunity available. The scholarship is $1,000 for your first year of furthering your education after high school and the second year. So you get $1,000 the first year and $1,000 the second year, uh, furthering your education after high school. The deadline to apply is going to be March 31st. So make sure you tag or share with a graduating senior that you know from St. Louis Public Schools, Ferguson Florissant School District, or Riverview Garden School District, all right? The next thing is that after morning worship, like every Sunday, you have an opportunity to connect with us via Zoom. It's usually around 1130, right after our morning worship service. Come and hang out with us for a few minutes in the Tab Cafe and just fellowship, connect with other people, learn about the Tab if you're just joining us for the first time, and you will have a wonderful experience there. The next thing, Bible study, Tuesdays, 6 30. You don't want to miss it. Bible study is an amazing opportunity for you to learn the Word of God and for you to connect and fellowship with others that are also learning about the Word of God on Tuesday nights at 6.30 via Zoom. That information is available on our Facebook page as well. Lastly, we have been in the book of Joshua and our 2021 theme is forward. We are moving forward. We will not fear. We will be courageous. Why? Because we know that the Lord is with us. And I don't know about you, but I have been enjoying the preaching series in Joshua that Pastor Andre has been preaching on. So I'm getting excited even thinking about Joshua and the, the, the message series is coming and the continuation today. So let me pray. Let's worship together and then we will get to the word. Father, we thank you. We honor you, oh God. We praise you. We give you glory. You are so good to us, God. Even when we don't deserve it, you are just good and you are faithful. God, we thank you so much. Lord, we thank you that things could be way worse. But we thank you that because of your grace and your mercy, things that, that they are well as they are. Lord, I ask that you anoint and bless this worship experience. Let it be a worship experience like no other. Let hearts be changed. Let lives be changed, oh God. And let us focus our attention on you right now in the name of Jesus. Let us leave not the same way we came. God, we give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you. Bless everyone under the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship. I just want to praise forever, forever and ever and ever and ever, and ever for all for you've done for me. Blessings and glory. And honor, they all belong, belong, yeah. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. We just come to praise you. 
forever and ever. Endeavor and ever, yeah, yeah. For all that you've done for me, for me, for me, yeah, 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 yeah. And honor, they are. Give some credit out of our lives, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing, for blessing me. Come on and clap your hands. Give God some praise up in here. We're going to praise him forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. For everything that he's done for me. Everything that he's done for me, for me, for me. Let the glory of the Lord 
Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord yeah. rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Good morning to you. I hope and pray that you have enjoyed worship thus far. What a week, really two weeks we've had as we look at everything starting from January 6th on around to now a second impeachment, the only president in history to get a second impeachment. These are trying times. And even though they are what they are, I don't want us to lose sight this morning of how good our God is, how gracious he is, and how worthy he is to be glorified and magnified. So I want us to focus as hard as it can be sometimes. I want us to focus on what God is speaking and doing in spite of, or uh, shall I say, in the midst of these other things that are happening. We're not going to let go of what's happening in our world in terms of our government because it does impact us. However, ultimately, we know that because God is in control, it's not even a steal for me, it's God is in control. And all of this has a purpose and an end date. So with that being said, I wanna get into this word today. I've 
This is to be a little bit more didactic today, a little bit definitely heavy on the teaching side. So I decided to rep one of my alma maters, Mizzou, this morning. I know some of y'all not Mizzou fans. Well, today on the screen, you got to deal with Mizzou. Hashtag it if you want to or not. But seriously, let's get into Joshua. We're continuing on this What Now series. And the message today is titled Charged. God has charged all of us to do something. You were created on purpose for purpose. I'm going to say that again. You were created on purpose for purpose. And so what has God charged you to do? I want you to take note of that. Matter of fact, as we're flipping to Joshua chapter 1, starting at verse 10, why don't you just take a few minutes after you get there and let me know you got it. If you're watching on YouTube this morning, type, I got it. I got it, Pastor. I'm with you. If you're watching Facebook Live this morning, type, amen, that lets me know that you are at chapter 1 in Joshua verse 10, the book right after Deuteronomy and right before Judges, Joshua chapter 1 verse 10. And with that, as we're going there, I, I want you to just take a few seconds, if you will, and, and type, what do you sense God is charging you to do? Even in the midst of life, we've, we've got pandemic, we've got politics, uh, we've got issues of lingering poverty as a result of COVID, job loss, job challenges, all of that. And God created you again on purpose for purpose. So what is God charging you? What do you sense God is up to in your life? Yeah, what? Come on, let me let me see it this morning. Quickly, 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 because we got to move. We got to move. We got to get to this word. I, I want to get this word in us because it's the word that will guide and comfort us in times like these. What is God charging you to do? All right, you typing it? Okay, good. Here we go. Let's look at this. Joshua chapter 1, starting at verse 10 through verses 18. I'm reading from the NASB, and it says this. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, pass through the midst of the camp and command the people, saying, prepare provisions for yourselves, for within three days you are to cross this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess it, to the Reubenites and to the Gadites and to the half-tribe of Manasseh. Joshua said, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God gives you rest and will give you this land. Your wives, your little ones, and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you beyond the Jordan, but you shall cross before your brothers in battle array, all your valiant warriors, and shall help them until the Lord gives your brothers rest as he gives you, and they also possess the land which the Lord your God is giving them. Then you shall return to your own land and possess that which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you beyond the Jordan toward the sunrise. They answered Joshua, saying, all that you have commanded us, we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. Just as we obey Moses in all things, so we will obey you. Only may the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Anyone who rebels against your command and does not obey your words and all that you command him, shall be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this morning, for this Sunday, for this day of worship, for this is the day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Speak to our hearts, speak to our minds, speak to our souls. Allow your word to edify, to lift, to convict, to shape, to change. Lord, to strengthen us. May it point us in the direction you want us to go as your people. And may we allow it to become the light to our feet and the lamp to our path and guide us into the things that you would have for us. I pray and ask this for our church and for everyone who's watching or and or will watch this. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, the subject this morning is charged, charged. We see flowing out of chapter one. This message being commissioned. Joshua was commissioned for a particular assignment. And as now he is commissioned, he gives the charge to the people. As a leader, he's tasked with moving forward in God's plan. I won't rehash last week. If you missed last week, take some time and view last week. 
and simply just want to say that in last week, we examined all it meant for him to be commissioned to be God's appointed man after receiving the baton from Moses. The first thing we see here is that this now petition man who's received the instruction, verse nine, of being strong and very courageous. We see in this text, his first thing is he commands the leadership. We see he commands the leadership. Verse 10, he goes through the camp. And he goes through the camp and he gives us two things that he calls the leaders to do. To, to pass through and to prepare. Pass through. Meaning for them now to go and collect and spread the word that it is now time. The very thing that we have been waiting on. And keep in mind, Deuteronomy chapter one, verses one tells us that they were waiting on the east side of the Jordan. They had arrived at that point. The moment has now come to move forward. It's amazing to me how God at that very moment can now give the go ahead. All the preparation, all the laying out, all the obstacles, all the stuff they had been through watching family members die because of disobedience, watching people they cared about not be able to see that thing that they had told them and talked about. And after all of this preparation, being on the east side of the Jordan, God now says it's time to move. I, I wonder this morning if I've got anybody watching who is at that place of wondering if it was worth what you went through to get to where you are. Can I tell you that all of it's worth it because in the moment when God says it's time to move, you'll be able to move. Joshua tells the leaders now, it's time to move. I need you to pass. That word pass is a command. It means to come along. It means to walk through. It means to pull. Because sometimes there are some instances where if you are the one who God is asking to lead a thing, where everybody might not be coming willingly, you got to pull them along. I, I know for some of us, you say, if they don't want to come, then just don't let them go. We'll get to that in a moment in this text. But I want to suggest to you, there are some times where God says, I need you to pass through and prepare. You, you're the leader. You're the, you're the appointed person. You, you are called to corral a certain group. Your comrades are to come together based off you challenging them. And maybe, just maybe, somebody ain't where they should be this morning because you weren't willing, or I wasn't willing to pass through, pass through, pull, pull along. And before you start typing and commenting and saying, that ain't what I do, and I ain't creative for all that, and I ain't got time for all that. Can I suggest that somebody watching this morning, at least two, three of y'all, somebody came and pulled you along. <laughs> oh, I just messed with your psyche this morning. I just got all in your Kool-Aid because the reality of it is there are some of us who we are where we are, not because we came willingly, not because we followed all the right orders, not because we necessarily wanted to, but somebody pulled us along. The way I would illustrate it, have you ever been at home as a child and a parent tell you not what you gonna think about doing, but what you gonna do? And you say to yourself, you've got a plan. You're not bold enough to say it out, loud but you got a plan and in your plan you're saying to yourself no i'm going to do this and they somehow in different ways just pull you along i i know i'm not by myself there were times where my dad just kind of pulled me along i i didn't want to go i didn't want to do it i i didn't really want to follow suit he just kind of pulled me along and i wonder do i have anybody who would just take 15 seconds right in your living room, your car, or wherever you are watching this this morning, and thank God that he sent some people who was willing to pass and pull you along so that you could become who you are today. He says, pass along and prepare to take possession. Prepare. That word prepare is a command also, and it means more than just be ready. It means being in position to take action, pre prepare. What, what is God calling you to prepare? I told you this is be a little more didactic. I wanna dive deep 
deep, deep into this because I think that some of us don't see what we think we should from God. We don't experience what we say we believe God for. We don't get to engage where we have said out loud God is leading us because we're not prepared to take possession. Some of us get lost in the clock and say it's been too much time has gone by. So I'm just going to put that on the shelf and I'll, I'll deal with that later. And then God shows up and says, now it's time to prepare to take possession. Notice the instance of this. It says in verse 11, he said, in three days we going. Come on, time to move. I wonder this morning, do we have any people in our congregation who are ready to move? Yeah, let me bring it home. Can I, as I teach this, can I bring a little vision casting? Uh, I'm sure you watched the news this week. We were hoping for, praying for that Farragut Elementary would not uh, be one of the schools that would be chosen to be closed. We had a good conversation with Dr. Adams. In that, I told him either way, let us know because there's an A plan and a B plan. And now we know. So guess what? We still got to move. I, I wonder, do I have anybody who's prepared now that we got to move? We, we got to make a faith move. We, we may need to, to buy a school and, and create a school. We may need to buy a school and create some housing. Or we may need to buy a school and create a school and some housing all on the same roof. I don't know what God might do, but I just know this. We got to pass through and pull some folk along with us and be prepared to take possession. I wonder this morning, do I have anybody that's willing and ready and able to be prepared? Prepared, prepared. I, I know... Some of us say, my creativity comes as I go. I'm not trying to say God is trying to stifle your creativity. I am trying to say that even to be creative, that takes some preparation. God is saying, prepare. Look at, look at the text. It, it says that we have to be prepared for God's gift. It's a gift. God's giving it to them. I won't dive into our Bible study lesson this week, but shameless plug, this week coming up at 630, we're going to pick back up. We're talking about land being a gift and how it requires the S word, so submission. And, and but, but I won't dig deep ahead of Bible study, but I would simply say that when God gives, he gives perfect gifts, but he needs to prepare people to gift. If if I'm not prepared, then I, I might miss out on the timing of the gift. So I can't get mad if I miss what God wants to do in my life. And you can't get mad if you miss what God wants to do in your life if you decide not to be prepared. Oh, I'll, I'll get around to that. I know God has been asking me to start reading my Bible more, but, but I ain't got time right now. I'll get around to that. And then all of a sudden crisis hit and we don't know what to say when God gave us downtime to prepare to study the word, to show ourselves approved workmen that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And yet we're not prepared or a storm comes and it rides and rages for a while and we're not prepared to see that God may be gifting us in the storm with ways to get out of the storm, but we can't handle the gift because we're not prepared, prepared, prepared. We want possession without preparation. And so God sends Joshua. Joshua then sends his leaders to prepare, to prepare, to pass and to prepare. So he, he commands the leaders. We see the commandment of the leadership. But not only do we see the commandment of the leadership, we see the commandment of the tribes. He commands the tribes. He speaks to them. He says, now, here, let me give you a reminder. Check out the reminder, verse 12. Remember Manasseh and Reubenites and Gadites when you were on the other side of the Jordan and Moses gifted you this side. If you want to know the full story, Numbers 32. I won't go there this morning, but I want to put in your hearing that they decided that they didn't want to go over the Jordan, that it was better for them on the east side of the Jordan. I want to say to somebody this morning that it's okay sometimes, too, for people to stay where they are. 
Everybody can't walk into what God promised you. Quit trying to take people to a place that God didn't call them to be. You worried yourself sick trying to get somebody somewhere where God never wanted them to be in the first place. Doesn't make them wrong. Doesn't make them bad. Doesn't mean they've done something to be out of favor with God. They just need to be in the place that God called them to be so they can thrive right where they are. Quit trying to promote people to a place that God didn't call them to and then get mad when it causes you pain. Here it is. He gives them the reminder. The reminder is, check it out. The deal, you guys going to stay on this side. But when it comes time for us to cross, you got to help us cross. You got to defend. Your men have to defend. The, the children and the women can stay on the east side with the cattle and with all that we have been able to acquire as a result of God allowing glimpses of conquering. I want to say that as God gifts a prepared people, he gives glimmers in early wins, victories to show us of what he's capable of. But yet not so much so that it overwhelms us and causes us to back up for what he wants to do, because what he wants to do is greater than what we could ever think or imagine. And so he walks us gently into it. So he's gently walking them into this by reminding the other two and a half tribes about the arrangement that had been made. Here's the arrangement. Now it's time to make good on that arrangement. That's the reminder. Here's the revelation that he gives them. Joshua is leader. The revelation is he wants them to understand in order for them to have rest where you are on the east side of the Jordan, you have to help us conquer the west side of the Jordan. Notice their rest, meaning their peace, their shalom, their wholeness, their joy was connected directly to their brothers and sisters. And even though they weren't in the same place, they were still connected. And what happened to one affected them and what they did not do infect, impacted and infected or affected rather their brothers and sisters on the West side. What am I trying to say that in the body of Christ catch this as a church this morning? I want us to understand this, get this down because God has charged us we got to do what we are called to do together. It's a togetherness thing, not an I thing. I know oftentimes, particularly in African-American churches, a lot of cheerleading happens for a select few. You cheer them on to do the work. You cheer them on to be great and sit back. But that's not God's design. The design is, is that we all work and then we all cheer together. I... I, I love each and every one of you, but I, I don't want to be surrounded by cheerleaders. I want to be surrounded by people who are children of God saying, Pastor, this is my part. Get out of the way and let me do my part. I'm charged to this. I, I'm called to this. This is what I do. <laughs> I, I, I was listening to a, a gentleman once. I was out of town at a conference, and um, this stuck with me. He, he was going to get a suit made. And he had been to this person's uh, facilities before and had a few suits made there. So they had a relationship. And as a result of having a relationship and this individual having good customer service, he pretty much knew this gentleman's dimensions by memory, knew some of the certain things that he liked, disliked, certain places where to make, you know, this curve in, that curve out, make this arm length just as such because he knew how this particular individual liked his shirts to fit with his cuff links. And so as he was tailoring this suit this day, the gentleman said, I've got to ask you, I haven't given you one instruction on this suit. And yet you not only did it and tailored it to me so perfect, but you did things that I didn't even know that I would want done to make it fit the way it does. And he said, he asked the, the brother, he said, how were you able to do that? And he said, the gentleman just responded, because this is what I do. I, I, I want you to catch that. He, he wasn't being arrogant. He wasn't being prideful. He wasn't being boastful. He was just simply saying, because I'm gifted and wired and connected and I'm in position, 
I don't need you to help me do everything because I'm called to this thing. And he just said, this is what I do. I want to do. I have anybody who's watching this morning who knows there's just certain things that you are called, gifted, wired uniquely to do. And God has gifted you. And when somebody asks you why you do it like that and how come it turns out the way it does, you can just say, this is what I do. What God is teaching us through this is that we are connected and we need people to do what they do so that all of us can experience rest. If I have rest and you don't, then we don't have rest. And if you have rest and I don't, then we don't have rest. The text teaches us this morning, the revelation is we are connected and what, what happens to one or what one does impacts the whole. Can I tell you how we've gotten way off track in this country? It's because that's simple truth. Because we, we, there's battles now for what's true and what's not. True wants to be told as relevant to a particular person's situation. There's no overarching truth. The Bible as such for many. It's what's true to me. But truth is what God says. And this truth here is we are all connected. We are in a conundrum as a country because we stop remembering that what one does to one impacts us all. But God here shows us that rest is possible when we're all in the right position, doing what we're gifted and wired to do in the way that God called us to do it. I pray that somebody catch that this morning. Catch this revelation. I'm bringing it down a notch because I want to talk sincerely to you. Those on the east side could not fully experience all what the possession means until they had done their part to help their brothers on the west side because they were all connected. Possessed doesn't mean just take ownership. It means take responsibility. And so we can't take responsibility until we understand our part to be connected to the whole. So not only do we see that he commanded the leaders and that he commanded the tribes, we also see the confirmation of the people the confirmation of the people. He gets to the end of verse 15 and he wraps up for them everything that God was asking. And then the people say in verse 16, catch this, they answered Joshua saying, all that you have commanded us, we will do. And whatever you send us, wherever you send us, excuse me, we will go. So we see their compliance. That's a nice way of saying their submission. In order for this to work, meaning us operating and moving forward in 2021, we're going to have to understand it takes some submission. Yes, I, I know some people, hashtag mask up, have an issue with wearing a mask. You can have an issue with it, but if we're called and connected and won't all won't rest, then wear a mask even if you don't like it because you understand what you do impacts the whole. They became compliant, not to Joshua, but to what God wanted to do in the midst of them through Joshua. Catch the difference. Too often submission is focused on the man. So then we become sour because we don't want to submit to the man. But it's not about submitting to the man as much as it is submitting to God. When we buck against what God is trying to do, what we're really saying when you buck that individual, you're not bucking them, you're bucking the assignment that God has given them and you are connected to that assignment. And so you will never have rest and I will never have rest until we become compliant, obedient. I'm dropping some heavy words on us this morning, some words that typically in our society today we don't like and I wouldn't even argue that we struggle with in God's church, meaning not the institution so much as I am talking about us as God's people. Hear me this morning. Their compliance is not so much about being compliant with Joshua. It's about being compliant with God. God, I surrender all to you. Some of us love that song. I know I do. And yet we'll sing it and really won't allow the meaning of it to sink in. I'm praying that this morning somebody allows this to sink in and says, I'm, I'm, I'm going to submit myself. Matter of fact, I, I, I just want, if you're watching YouTube, 
uh, on subscribers. Thank you so much. By the way, shameless plug. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe there because of some ministry things we want to do. But if you're watching on YouTube this morning, just type, I surrender. I surrender. I, I've been trying to do it my way, God. I've been trying to walk this out and buck against those you put in place to be a part and for me to be connected to. I want to do this differently in 2021. I do want to move forward in my life. I'm tired of moving backwards. I'm tired of living through a rearview mirror and I can't drive forward that way. So God, yes, I surrender. I surrender. If you're watching Facebook Live this morning, just, just say it with me. I submit. I submit to you, God, because I want to move forward. Here's the other part, and I'm done, and I'm out of your head. Really, I am. The other part of this is, they say, wherever you go, wherever you send us, we'll go. They didn't ask for details. It teaches us a valuable principle. People of faith, the faith is the explanation. We don't wait for an explanation from God. We allow God to lead us by faith. Now, I know ooh, some of us are going to say, wait a minute now, hold up. What are you trying to say? Does that mean never research, never plan? No, we just talked about preparation. Hear me. What I'm saying is, is that they moved forward because they didn't wait and give God excuses. They didn't need God to explain everything. They had grown to a place where they trusted him enough to know that God would make plain as they move. Can I tell you, some of us haven't gotten the instruction we're looking for because we ain't took the first step yet. God is waiting for us to step so that he can show. Step, show, not show, step. It's step, show. And I know that goes against our psyche because I go where well, I go anywhere. How many of you are like me? You'll pull out your phone or you on your, some of you got fancy automobiles. And you plugging it in the GPS and you pulling it up before you put the car in drive and you going to know exactly how many of you not only are you putting in the coordinates or the address, but you hit the direction button because you want to see ahead of time which streets. And because if it's a certain street and you think, you know, a shortcut, no, nah, I'm not going to go that route. I'm going to go here, go there. All that's good and the natural to a certain extent. But here we see God is trying to tell us that I need some people to move by faith and not by explanation. Wherever you're willing to send us is where I go. They say to Joshua, though, catch this. Here's their challenge to the leader. Only be strong and very courageous. There it is again. Strong and courageous. Strong meaning trust God for strength. Courageous meaning be godly confident and allow him to continue to lead. I want to take a few seconds as we close out. We, we won't put the clock up, but just do this for me because I, I want this to sink in this morning. I want this to be as practical as possible. I want it to be where the cookies are on the shelf where they can be reached. I want you to think about right now, just take a moment. I want you to think about right now and the reason why I say take a moment right now is because some of us move around so much in a given week. You don't know when the last time you actually just sat still. I want you to take a moment right now and think about the follow-up to what I asked at the beginning. What is God charging you to do? Coupled with what step is he asking you to take? And let me give you a little bit of a clue as to how you know potentially what the step is he's asking you to take because it doesn't make sense and you don't have the full scope of what you would like to know first before you take it. It's calling you, it's not about coming out of a comfort zone, it's about trust and many of us have trust issues including with God. So this morning, I want you to take a moment, take some seconds, think about it. What step now is God asking you to take? And let me tell you this, only be strong and very courageous as you take the step. While you're, you're thinking about that, just close your eyes. I wanna pray, close us out in prayer. And then we'll go into Zoom 
to the Tab Cafe. Please come in, join us. Let's talk, let's fellowship together. But as we're going that route, I want to pray and close us out because there's somebody who's going to watch this or watching it right now. And God is calling you. He's commanding you to go through and command those whom he's giving you charge over. And he's calling you to some extended family to connect with. And they're going to come back to you and say, we'll do. But only be strong and courageous. What step is God asking of you? Let's pray. Father, we need your guidance. We need your guidance now more than ever. We live in a world that has all kinds of things that are happening all at the same time. And yet you call us to move forward. You call us to do things that don't make sense to us. And yet we know in a very tangible way, it is you ordering and orchestrating our steps. So God speak clearly and boldly and plainly to us it's in the sense of giving us that boost to just take the next step. Somebody has been running all this week, Lord, running from you, running from place to place, meeting to meeting, Zoom to Zoom, location to location, taking kids, feeding people, watching over others. But now as they sit still in this moment, Lord, would you speak to their hearts? Would you speak in ways to them that you haven't spoken to them ever before? May you whisper to them the promise of Joshua 1 and 5, that you would never leave them nor forsake them. And then, God, as they boldly step, may you then just begin to reveal what it is you have for them and how it connects to the home. And God, as you do it, we'll give you praise and we'll magnify and glorify your name because we will know that it was all because of you and what you, Lord, wanted to do in us. It's in Jesus' name we pray and ask these things. Amen. Listen, beloved, that's all I got for this morning. See you in Tab Cafe. And if I don't see you in Tab Cafe, I hope to see you Tuesday at 6.30 in Bible study. Take care and God bless.